friends and welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to be doing a repot and chat video. I've got a bunch of cacti here that I recently got in my conservatory archives haul so if you haven't seen that definitely recommend going watching me unbox them because it's very fun. It's a great time um, but they're all in soil which is great because some people like having cacti in soil. I have only ever had success with cacti in semi-hydro substrate without a water reservoir. So I'm going to be switching them all into semi-hydro substrate or a non-organic substrate today and answering some of y'all's questions from over on Instagram while I do so. So before I get into it, I just want to say if you're new here and you don't know me already, hi, my name is Emma and I make house plenty content all over the internet. So if you want to follow along with my house plenty journey and maybe learn something along the way, stick around, watch some more of my videos and subscribe to my channel. If you're not new here, thank you so much for coming back. I really appreciate it. Let's get on into the repot. So I have watered all of these in hopes that it'll make it easier to get the soil off. So they're actually sitting in water now. And I bought cactus gloves because I was scared to repot them without something of the sort to help me hold them because they're scary and sharp. So I found these on Amazon. I don't know if they're gonna be any good, but we'll give them a go and I'll link them down below in case, in case y'all wanna try them for yourselves. So, I think we should just get right into it. Mm, these are a bit these are tight. Um, I say maybe size up in them. These are size eight and I have hands. <laughs> I, I don't know how to describe the size of my hands. I got a medium or whatever because I felt like that would make the most sense. So I guess I think I'm gonna have one hand that's soily and one hand that's um, Glubby to hold the cactus. That I think that makes the most sense to me, at least. Um, but I can answer some questions. Okay, look. Okay. While I do this, I'm really nervous. <laughs> like I've I've not ever done cacti and succulents, like repotted them, save for the one time when I first tried putting them. Ah. Uh, I'm scared I'm hurting it. I can't feel anything with the gloves, which I mean, I know is probably for the best, but I can't feel if it's working or not, if I'm pushing too hard. Oh, okay, cool. I think I'm gonna try to keep them in the same size pots as they are. I'll just keep the pots that they have because they work. But yeah. Okay, the first question. <laughs> Sorry, I got distracted by doing this because I'm scared of it. So the first question is whether I am going to do my hair another color again. And the answer is yeah, probably at some point. I. I'm not a fan of not having colored hair in some capacity or another. I really like having some funkiness, but honestly, I feel most like me when I'm like half and half blonde like this. It just feels like who I am as a person. It feels correct, if that makes sense. It feels like I am, I am, Closest to who I should be like this. I, I mean, but the plain brown was fine for a while and it was probably good to like get my hair a bit healthier, but I much prefer this and I feel like this is how I feel. Like when I picture me, this is how I picture me. So I'm glad to be back to the half and half. And I might do different colors at some point, but I just, I quite like the monochromatic white and black as well, so. Yeah, sorry, this is just a, like a weird ass plant. Like I'm confused. It's got like, I don't, I don't know if it's gonna focus, but it's got like a 
stem underneath the soil which I've obviously never seen before because I've not had many cacti and succulents it's just so odd I'm also somewhat terrified that I'm going to find like mealybugs or something not that I think any of these have mealybugs because they all look like quite healthy but I know that cacti and succulents I feel like I don't know that I think I've heard that they're a bit more prone to um pests like mealybugs than things like thrips or spider mites or whatever so I'm just really scared that I'm gonna like find root mealies or something um which would not be fun but I mean if I do I'm being stabbed I'm I should probably get a fair pair of tweezers in here um so this is what I didn't want to happen and now I'm getting dirt in it this is a really good idea Emma okay yeah I'm fine I'm fine I'm fine um <laughs> I think I, I'm also going to take the soil off of all of them as much as possible and then rinse them to put in the to put in the semi hydro. I feel like that's the best sort of option. I'm scared. I feel like I'm gonna break the spikes. It feels like wrong. Ooh, this one's got great roots. I don't know if you can see that. Really good roots. Um but yeah, hair dye, I probably will because I, I like change and I get bored. So may as well switch things up every now and then. Um, it'll be fun. The next question is, if you could only have one type of pest for the rest of your life, what would it be? Oh, that's difficult because I don't want any pests at all, obviously. Mmm. I feel like probably thrips. I like I've I've been dealing with thrips for ages now and I feel like I'm used to them. Am I allowed to treat them? I think that's my main question. Am I allowed to like keep them at bay? Like I can have them but like keep them at bay? Because if so, that's basically what I'm doing now. And I feel like I can tolerate that. Um I wouldn't want to like have infestations of them all the time. I mean, I wouldn't want to have infestations of any pests all the time because my collection would probably just like die. But yeah, I feel like thrips would probably be okay. Or like maybe fungus gnats. I feel like those are like completely manageable and they don't actually hurt the plants really. So maybe fungus gnats. Even though they're, they're a little bit more annoying to me. No, okay. Thrips because they're less annoying to me. Um, <laughs> Because I, I would not want something that was super duper annoying to me all the time around. Like, I feel like my fungus gnat problem has gotten, like, better um, recently. I haven't noticed them as much. And I don't know if that's just because they've not been about or if I actually got rid of them. But I think, I think, I think I'm doing better at watering and stuff. So it's probably that. I'm scared to break off these roots. But I'm curious um, what pest you would choose to be like your lifelong pest. Oh my God, every time I see a bit of perlite, I'm like, really bugs. Not that I think there are that. I don't know why I'm just suddenly really afraid of them. I feel like I never had them previously. Um, and part of me was thinking because it's uh, because I'm not that into cacti and succulents and like I've not had them with Hoyas which is like super duper lucky but now I'm like what if they're in the soil and I touch them and no 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 I I cannot for the life of me do mealybugs they freak me out the most I would that would be the one I would like to have an infestation of or like permanently forever at the least 
if that makes any sense. Oh, I've just like come up with like a good side question off of that, like kind of the opposite of if you could eradicate one type of houseplant pest um, and like just like never ever get that kind again, just the one, what would it be? And I feel like it would be... I feel like it would have to be mealybugs because they freak me out and I know I'm quite lucky in that I've not had an infestation of them before and maybe it's dumb that I've chosen that one. Oh, maybe spider mites. I find spider mites the most annoying to treat, I think. They're like much, much more difficult to, to kill in my experience. So, yeah, maybe, 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 maybe spider mites. I think that's the one I would do. Because I don't think mealybugs make sense for me because I don't have, I haven't had enough experience with them to like truly hate them. Other than the fact that they look gross and I don't like how they look. I think I'm doing a pretty good job with this. I definitely need to rinse the roots, but because these are going in semi hydro without the water reservoir, like I would for like an alocasia. Because like when I keep alocasias and philodendrons and any other sort of plant in semi-hydro, I will keep it with a self-watering pot. And I use the self-watering pot um, to make sure that, that the semi-hydro is always staying hydrated. But when I use semi-hydro with cacti and succulents, I'm not trying to make sure that it's staying hydrated all the time. Oh my goodness, okay, Cleo's in here and I'm like really, really nervous. Like this is the one, one thing that she like a thousand percent cannot jump on the table for because I would, I would die if she got poked by a cactus. That would make me so sad. Um, but she's just sat herself down in the sun, um, which is good. Oh, I think another one of the questions was show us Cleo. So, um, let, whoa, okay. Look at that. I've got cacti on my fingers. Come on, focus. Do you see that? They got stuck. I'm scared. Okay, we're just gonna leave those over there. So, I mean, these gloves are working so far. I haven't stabbed myself, but like, I, there's definitely things in here. But what I was gonna do was show you Cleo right now because she is freaking adorable. She's just laid herself, ah! Down in the sun. Hello, baby. Laid herself down in the sun. And hopefully she doesn't get near these little cacti. Because that would be bad. We do not want that. Um, but yeah, she's, she's doing really, really well. She actually went to the vet um, the other day. And got a jab. And it was not fun. And I feel like this... So we, at the vet we go to, we never have like the same person twice. We've always had like different, oh. This is scary, I feel like it's rotted. This just pulled right out. And like you can kind of see it in there. Oh, mm, mm, okay, that is rotted, that is rotted, that is rotted. This is squishy. I don't know what to do with that. Okay, we're gonna leave that. <laughs> I feel like this is why I can't do cacti and succulents. Cause I'm like, it's weird and rotted and I can't touch it anymore. <laughs> so I'm gonna move on to a different one. But what I was freaking saying was that um, at the vet, um, it was just her normal like checkup, six monthly checkup thing which is good, we, we like getting those for her. But um, we, we have a different vet person, nurse or whoever, GP, animal GP, whenever we go in there. And like some of them have been really, really good about like giving jabs, vaccinations. And like Cleo's not even noticed it, but this one, I think she was just like a little bit more hesitant, which is fair. I know it's like scary trying to jab an animal, um, but, like, Cleo is very squirmy and doesn't like to be held, and so, she, like, she was being held and bent the needle, and so she had to, like, get a, the second half of the jab again, because it wasn't good enough. So, that was, that was quite sad and hard to see, but I was almost like, I could do a better job than this. 
Um, <laughs> I know we all think that, but it's probably not true. I'm sure it's very difficult to be a vet, um, especially when you have a little squirmy girl like Cleo up in your up in your zone. Um, my brain is all over the place, um, if you couldn't tell, but. Before Cleo came in, I was talking about cacti and succulents and putting them in semi-hydro and the benefits of not using a water reservoir system for them. And it is that I don't need to get a thousand percent of the soil and like organic matter off of the roots. If there's some in there, it's okay, which is awesome. Like I will clean them and rinse them off, but I don't need to worry about them having some and it rotting because they don't like because it dries out i let them dry out completely and then sit like i water them once a month and they don't sit in water they sit and dry out instead which is great um speaking of which i do need to water the other ones that i have in semi-hydro but i thought i could do that um like when i water these ones after i have planted them up so that was my plan with those because they do need a wee bit of water yeah oh another question was um how is the wedding planning going and have you got picked a date yet two different questions um but the wedding planning is going good we don't have a date yet um because we don't have a venue yet um not for lack of trying just because we've um we we found some places that we quite like and we want to go visit them but they are all not super duper close to London. So we have to like kind of make a trip of it, which I'm very, very excited about. And I probably will film, but I don't know if I will share it with y'all until after the, after the wedding, or I'll just share it over on Patreon. Um, just because it's not plant related content. I feel like that's not what people who are necessarily on my Planty channel are here for. So I want to respect that. Um, but definitely gonna be keeping some sort of footage or pictures or something over on um probably patreon um to to share because i'll be just so freaking excited and wanting to share the news like it's like when we got engaged and i wanted to share immediately on here but obviously i couldn't because i needed to like make sure all the people within our lives that we know in person knew first and we told everyone that we wanted to tell before we hopped on the internet and said anything. And so I was just like filming without my ring on and stuff like that for like a month and it was stressing me out. <laughs> um, because I had to like remember to take it off in time and stuff like that. So that was, <laughs> that was a pain, but that's, that's how I feel about like all the wedding stuff. It's like, I want to share everything, but at the same time I want to like keep some stuff just to us. So it's the wedding planning is going good and we've got good ideas but i feel like we can't really decide anything really until we have uh, a venue um because that's when we can get a date and then we can get kind of everything else off of that based off of finding people who work um for that date so and in the location that we are picking because that does matter as well you can't just be like here I and mean, maybe you can i don't really know do like caterers and stuff travel? I feel like they probably wouldn't. But like photographers would, tra would travel. Not like travel around the world. I mean some probably do. Like destination weddings exist. But like around the UK I feel like photographers and videographers travel. If any of you know any or like have any recommendations for um, photographers, videographers, caterers, florists all those kind of things like let me know because wedding planning is freaking expensive and like trying to fit like within our budget is um not necessarily difficult but like you, you, like we want to be respectful and not just like spend an outrageous amount on our wedding which is i mean if if people want to do that that's absolutely fine i've got no problem with other people doing it it's just not something that is a priority for us to spend a lot of our money on so we're trying to keep it fairly reasonable budget wise um but we have we have some ideas it's just hoping that they all align which i think they will because i have confidence in joe and i as people who can plan things um, do, -do, -do. 
I'm probably gonna have to like de dethorn these gloves after, but the good thing is it's going into the gloves and not my hand. Um, so that's good. Ooh, someone asked, what's your top wish list cactus or succulent right now, even if it seems unattainable? Um, my top one is actually, I think, quite attainable. It's the like euphorbia ghost cactus. And I do have a tiny, tiny, tiny one, but I really, really, really would love to have quite a big one um, or a euphorbia um, variegated because I think that they are so, 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 so beautiful. And I would love to have a big one because I've got my, um, ow! Uh, I've got my normal euphorbia just here. I'll, I'm replotting that as well in this, but I've got it just there and I do really, really like it, but I would love to have a big, big ghosty variegated one. Oh my goodness. That would be like heavenly. I feel like they're definitely around. They're just quite expensive, like especially getting a big one because they're quite slow growing. It takes a while to get them to grow big. But if I could get one, oh my god, I totally would. A big one, oh my <laughs> I don't even have space for a big one, but I just want one. Um, but if I could get one, even the size of the euphoria I have, which is like this tall from like the table to here, that would be phenomenal. I would love that. And I'm sure it'll happen one day. It's just not, it, it's not something that I feel it needs to happen right now. But I'm pretty sure they have them on conservatory archives. They were just, again, expensive and I, was trying to keep my spending to like about a hundred pounds because I know I could spend more but I'm like trying to be really really good about my spending um, on plants just because life is expensive at the minute. I'm sure a lot of y'all are probably experiencing that as well like the cost of living crisis is not making things difficult but harder for sure um, <laughs> and I would love to be able to just spend all of my money on more plants, but one, I don't have the space, and two, like, I can't justify the cost of spending too, too much on plants. I don't think I've spent more than like 50 pounds on a single plant this year. I'll check on that, like, what, six months time when I'm doing my budget review, but I don't think I have spent more than 50 pounds on a plant this year, which I think is pretty good. Um, I've been trying to keep it, keep it quite low. And that was for the booby cactus, um, that one. Um, I think someone also asked what my biggest wish list plant was in general. And like a non cacti succulent one. I feel like that's a lot harder for me at the minute. I, I, not that I haven't been wanting to get more, I've just been very content with the like tropical houseplants I have at home. I don't really feel like I need anything like desperately. I feel like I'm pretty, pretty good at the minute plant wise. Um, I still would love to have like a huge Monstera, but I don't think that's an attainable thing within my space anyways so I it's not something I would get for here at least in this flat um maybe if we ever move but yeah speaking of which I would freaking love to I think Joe and I are getting more and more tired of London um but I would I would love to move to somewhere with just like a bigger space and I don't think it's gonna happen for a while for like a myriad of reasons um but yeah, I just like, I'm, I feel like I'm jonesing to not be in the big city anymore, um, which is fair, but it also scares me to move somewhere that I've, um, not lived previously. I mean, rightly so. I feel like it is kind of a scary thing, given I did move across the freaking world to go live in the UK, but for some reason that was less scary than <laughs> moving to a different city. <laughs> I think that was actually also a question as well. Like, oh, very good segueing, Emma. Um... But yeah, it was scary moving across the world, but I feel like my, like my cousin lives 20 minutes walk away, like I'm not far. And when I moved here, my grandma was still with us. And so like my, my dad and my uncle and stuff would visit every once in a while from the States. And so it was, 
I feel like it wasn't it wasn't that bad and also because I moved here to go to um, do my master's degree I knew I was coming in and like I would have people around me immediately I feel like it'd be different if you just moved to a different country and like have to go find a job right away that terrifies me um, so so much more um, <laughs> yeah that, that that's scary but yeah I, I want to move out of London I'm, I feel like I'm I'm just I feel like I'm done with the city. I, I'm not taking advantage of it nearly enough. Like, Joe and I were talking about it the other day. Like, we're, we're not using all of the amenities that London has to offer. This one's going to be difficult to take out. I don't know how to grab it. I feel like I'm going to break it. Um, ow! <laughs> um, this one's got good roots on it as well. Nice. But yeah, I feel like we're not taking advantage of everything that London has to offer just because we're we're very much homebodies. Um, I don't. I feel like a lot of plant people might relate to that being a homebody. But I don't, I don't know how to hold this. It's just awkward. Stop being awkward. Um. <laughs> Stop being awkward. Yeah, but we just, like, it's great to have everything on your doorstep in a city, but at the same time, you have to deal with being in a city and, like, smaller homes and not being by nature, which is, like, something that's super important for me, and it's definitely something I miss about the States, um, because, like, my, my hobby when I was at university was outdoor adventuring, like, going camping and hiking and kayaking and swimming at the beach and all that stuff whereas here I don't feel like I can do those things because I live in the city um and so it's 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 a balance I guess but I, I miss it I miss being able to go outside and do outdoor things um and so like whenever we go traveling that's kind of one of our main goals is like to go to national parks and go out on hikes and stuff. We love those kind of holidays, but it'd be great if we could just like do that on the weekend. And like maybe just getting a car while we live in London would make sense to do that. But even then, like, I don't think we could justify the expense of having a car while also living in London. And like getting out of London oh, is such a pain driving. Um, respect to anyone who drives in London because it seems like it's terrifying. I also don't have my UK driver's license, so. I would, that would be another thing I would have to get um, if we moved out of uh, the city, I guess, because I'm I've gotten so used to like public transport um, and like cycling everywhere. But yeah, I also think that I would like to move back to the states still at some point. It's like always been within Joe and I's sort of long-term plan. I should five year plan, but it's been in our five year plan or at least my five year plan for <laughs> like the past three years. Um, and it's still in the five year plan. <laughs> so like it's just getting further and further away. And like it is difficult. It is kind of a big deal to, especially for Joe, to move to a new country where he's never, like he's not got any friends over there. His family's not over there. Like I feel like it's much, it'd be much more scary for him to move to the States than it was for me to move here. So I understand that I don't want to like push him into doing anything that he doesn't want to do. And it's not that he doesn't want to do it, he's just like nervous, which is rightly so. Like, I feel like that's completely normal and justified to be nervous about that. My pile of dirt has gotten very high. Cleo's on the move, this terrifies me so much. Okay, cool, she's just laying down. It's all good. <laughs> I just really don't want her to get pricked by one of these. Like, could you imagine her having a little spine in her little nose? That would literally devastate me. Um, so we're gonna avoid that at all freaking costs. Um, I'm gonna dump this bowl out really quick because, ooh, I don't need it anymore. I'm also scared to like rinse these. I feel like that's gonna be a scary thing to do. Um, um, 
someone said, so I struggle with hydrating my moss poles. I see in the water bottle trick, but I find that the water just trickles to the bottom of the pot and doesn't drench the moss any tips. Um, honestly, the biggest tip with moss poles is to like keep them consistently moist. Like you have to be really, really regular with them in order for it to like work correctly. Um, Cause once the moss gets hydrophobic, it's a lot harder to hydrate again. And that's probably why the like water that you're putting in from the water bottle is just trickling down. That is why I use the cup method. I'll put a picture of that up here. Um, basically it's a cup with tiny little holes poked in the bottom and I f like water the poles every few days through that cup, like before the pole is dehydrated, while the pole is still moist, not when it's sopping, like if it's, if it's still wet, like wet, wet from the day before, I won't water it. But if it's m only moist, I'll give it a little bit of extra water and then the moss is not hydrophobic and not um, susceptible to just like dripping down to the bottom, which sounds like is happening to you. And I'm sorry, cause that is something that I have taken a while to figure out actually, um, and to figure out how it works within my routine. Cause I feel like you just have to add it to your routine on a really, really regular basis in order to make the moss not go hydrophobic. But if your moss is hydrophobic, I highly recommend going in to the shower with them and showering the heck out of the moss poles, like hardcore shower the moss pole, get it soaking wet and even do it in stages. I tend to water my moss poles in stages once they've gotten hydrophobic. I'll do like a, a quick one on the outside, get it slightly receptive to water and then go in 20 minutes later and go do it again and again. That's definitely like a weekend project, um, but it's, if it hydrates them again. Um, and then from there, once they're hydrated, I will keep an eye on them soon after that and make sure that I'm watering them again within like a couple days to make sure that they're staying hydrated. Um, my voice is going, so give me a sec. I need to get some water after I finish this, um, this little cactus. Cause I've been talking for like a long time now. Um, and I had a cold last week, so I, my voice, I don't think it's used to being used again that, that much. Um, but I'm like really actually enjoying, I mean, I said I was going to stop talking. I'm not, I'm really enjoying the sunny day today. It is freaking gorgeous outside and like having the windows open and like just it being sunny is so, so nice. And I've like missed it incredibly. Um, cause the weather in the UK has been like so blur. Um, another reason why I would love to move back to the States um, or at least to San Diego because I miss the sunshine. Um, and just like warm weather all the time. And I know it's been really, really hot in a lot of places in the world, but the UK hasn't been one of them. We have not been hit by the heat wave that the EU has been getting. And I'm kind of jealous. I know it, I would be really, really complaining if it was the other way around, if we were getting heat wave as well. I'm sure I would. So the very British way of like, complain when it's too hot and complain when it's too cold. Um, there's, there's, there's no winning, but I think I'd rather it be, I think I'd rather it be warm than gray because when it's warm, I, I at least I have like energy, um, like if it's warm and sunny, if it's sunny, I've got energy. If it's cloudy, I don't. I feel like I'd say that in like literally every single video I ever do about anything. Um, last one of these small ones, my fingers have gone so pruney because the soil is so moist. I'm scared to do this one. Cause I feel like they're all going to be separated. Like, I feel like they're all going to pull apart or something. And there's so many little ones on here. 
it's okay it's working um i i'm gonna just zoom through this really quick without talking because i really want to get some water but i want to do this first because then i can rinse these all off and then put them in put them in the semi-hydro because that sounds like what i want to do ow just step myself That's the best I'm going to get with this one. Um, I am going to go rinse these and then we can pot them up. And then we can, we can maybe, if I've got time and more questions, do the other four I have here. The bigger ones. Maybe, maybe I'll only get through these small ones today. I, I don't know. But my fingers are so freaking pruny and gross. Um, <laughs> from the, like, wet soil. <laughs> Joy. Okay, give me one second. Okie doke. Um, I have rinsed all of these and I'll show you about where I try to rinse them to. I try and rinse them to about that. Which like there's still dirt on it. Like you can see that there's still dirt on it. But I'd rather there be a little bit of dirt and like not break the roots than the opposite. So that is what I'm going to go with some have a little bit more some have a little bit less that's just how it is but yeah we can put these into semi hydro um I do have some previously used semi hydro here because I did want um the bigger stuff because the holes in the bottoms of these are not um not tiny they're not huge but they're not tiny either so i wanted something oh in the middle oh and i don't have a bag of the course hydra so this will have to do and we can just go for it so someone says which i should have answered this question when i was talking about moss poles a second ago but they said my plants are not attaching to my damp moss pole it's been over a month um scary um but I feel like sometimes that happens um I have had some plants previously that just do not stick um it's kind of hard to say without knowing the exact type of plant it is because every plant works differently but like my my brain might be thinking like humidity it might be that it's not humid enough for the plant to stick out aerial roots is it sticking out aerial roots because if it is sticking out aerial roots then and they're just like not attaching then that m might be a different story but if it's not putting out aerial roots and that's why it's not attaching then it's probably a humidity issue which can be solved by getting a humidifier. This is so freaking hard to repot with gloves on. Impossible. I might just have to be careful. <laughs> I don't have the Optuna or whatever it's called, Apuntia. Um, which is like the super duper glucoid, tiny little fine hairs one. Um, it's actually in the kitchen. I, I decided I'm not going to recall that one today because I don't have the patience for it. But just like that. Dink. And I've got the name tag still in it because I need that. I'm just going to stick it in this um, thing of water so the semi hydro hydrates. Um, because I don't know if I'm gonna feel like running it under the tap after this. We'll see, we'll see how it goes. Um, I can lift this one by the spikes. Uh, it's hard to not get stabbed doing this. Um, I have chosen a difficult thing to do while speaking about like completely unrelated things. <laughs> but here we are doing that. Um, I don't know if I fully answered that question about the moss pole thing. I, 
it's, it's really, really hard to know without having more details. So if you want to send me more details, shoot me a message and I can like try and help you. Um, I also like highly recommend, um, like this is going to be somewhat shameless pluggy, but I recommend joining my Patreon. The person who asked this question, I know you're on my Patreon. So put it in the Discord chat um, and see what the others have to say as well because it's not just me answering questions about like plant doctor stuff over on the Discord. We all kind of work together to problem solve and help each other out, which is one of my like favorite things about um, our, our little community is we help each other out. Um, so ask over there on Discord. And if anyone else is interested in that sort of kind of community, if you don't have that elsewhere, um, my like good 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 growing fam just, like Patreon Discord is a good place for that, and we try and help each other out there, which is fun. So um, I highly suggest you go ask that over on the Discord because um, it's what it's for, and like I I don't have like a, that a thousand percent of the information. I try and give as much information as I possibly can to everyone, like in videos and stuff. But I am not all knowing when it comes to plants. I'm not even like mostly knowing when it comes to plants. Sometimes I feel like I don't know anything at all. Um, <laughs> I'm really selling myself here. Um, but yeah, like ask, ask, ask other people as well because my first thought would be community, but that might also not be the case. You also asked about UPIs um, and I'm gonna say it, my UPI is doing very, very poorly. So I cannot tell you how to take care of it, unfortunately. I love the little thing, but I, I don't know how to take care of it. Um, mine got thrips and basically lost all of its leaves. And it's now just kind of like sitting as a little tiny, nearly leafless thing. So I'm, I'm not the best person to ask about UPI, unfortunately. Um, if anyone here has tips about UPI um, and how to grow it and keep it happy, put them down below in the comments and the person who asked this, go look in the comments to see if somebody else has responded. I didn't get water. <laughs> I did the whole thing of watering all these things and getting them all clean and I didn't get myself water. It's fine, I can just be a cactus for another 10 minutes while I do the rest of this video. It's fine, it's fine. Oh, freaking so difficult to get these things in while there's semi-hydro in here, so I'm trying to put them in before I do the semi-hydro. But it's okay. Doing great. Um, I can do this one without gloves on. Y'all said this one was like a really fancy one. Um, the little blobby one. I don't know, I don't, I, I'm not well enough versed in rare cacti to be able to say which ones are like super rare or anything like that. But I do really like this one. It is so blobby and fun. I can answer another question. The next plant swap in London will be coming in October time. We have a venue for it, but we've not announced anything yet because we're busy working on both the Birmingham and the Bristol plant swaps. There's still tickets available for both of those. So if you're in the Birmingham or Bristol areas, have a look at anotherplantswap.com and get your tickets to the plant swap so we can swap together and it'll be so much fun. Um, but there will be another London one in October time. So keep an eye out for us announcing that. We'll probably announce it end of this month, I think, because we try our best to announce two months prior to the event happening. So people have time to like put it in their schedules because we know we're all busy people. So we wanna make sure that everyone has enough time before they like, and enough time to like plan plants as well and like get some stuff propagating if you wanna like get stuff rooted before you go, which isn't necessary, but if you do want to start prep, like prepping, um, it's nice to know in advance. So October time, keep an eye out for that. These next ones, I don't think I can do with my hands. I can, I can, I can, I can do it, I can do it. 
this one was not the scariest one. Um, there's definitely some scarier in here. Oh, uh, it's, it's not the most fun either, but it'll be fine. It'll be fine. It's not for very long. You can do this, Emma. Keep it up. But yeah, we will be trying to do at least two London swaps every, um, every year because that's like where we're based. So it's easiest for us to do swaps here and we'll try and do them like sort of framing so like the first one of our year and the last one of our year we try and keep the London ones like beginning of the season and the end of the season just give it give ourselves room between them because you don't want to be like going back to a city like really soon after going to like going to it the first time um, because then people won't have won't have like new stuff to swap so, we need to give y'all time between swaps, but yes, soon, don't worry. Um, maybe six months is too long between swaps, <laughs> um, but... Ow! This is when I'm really glad I have this little scoop because I don't think I could pot these without it. Okay, these last ones I definitely cannot, no way I'm going to be able to pop them without the glove. So, I'm going to have to use the glove. Um, someone asked what my favorite plant is right now. That's a tough one. Like, I mean, I feel like favorite plant is one that like almost always changes frequently. Um, oh, this one. Um, yeah, I feel like my favorite plant changes quite often. But right now... I am still really, really loving my fern leaf cactus. Like, it gives me so much joy. And, like, watching it grow is so different to a lot of things. Also, my big glorious sorry that was a weird way of saying glorious my brain always has to jump between glorious and gloriosum but my big glorious it's another one of my super favorites right now it's just put out a huge leaf i'll pop in a picture if i have one but yeah oh it's growing so well and my regal oh, my regal is putting out a huge new leaf as well oh my goodness it's gonna be in my favorites video this month i like i can see it all freaking ready it's looking so beautiful. Oh my god, also Cleo's being so freaking cute. Um, here's another shot of Cleo. Hello, BP. Hi. Yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness, I'm obsessed with her. She's so cute. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I think those are my favorites at the minute. Just ones that are doing really, really well. I'm also loving my booby cactus. Like, I'm really glad that I got that because that's a wishlist plant of mine. So I, I have a few at the minute, not, th not just one. Who can ever pick one? It's like picking a favorite child. Like, I feel like you can't, I, you just can't. It's not possible because they're all my little, my little plant babies. Um, but yeah, I think th those are, those are my main favorites. Someone has asked if I'm reading anything right now and I am, um, I don't know if y'all know that I read. Um, I, I feel like I got back into it semi-recently, like in the last year, I've gotten much more into reading again. I used to love, 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 love reading as a kid. And now I'm, I'm back in the super reading sort of thing again. This one's gonna be the most difficult, I feel like. But yeah, I, I, am, I am reading again, which I like. But I'm reading the final book of a series called Throne of Glass, which is by Sarah J. Mass, who, um, if you like reading um, fantasy romance sort of things, uh, mostly fantasy, this, this series, um, it is a great series. I am like so close to being done with the book and 
it is good. I got to like a really crazy point um, a couple nights back and I was just like, I immediately had to like tell Joe everything that's going on even though he's not read the books and has no context and I was just like this is happening um and like freaking out um so if anyone else has read or is reading Throne of Glass and you want to chat about it um holler because I can always I can always chat about that um I've also like I, I'm reading this after reading Akatar or A Corpse Thorn to Roses that series um if anyone's read that as well y'all know it is good um so yeah i'm i've very much gotten into like um like fantasy romance lately which is fun and i and like it's made me start watching game of thrones because i've never actually watched game of thrones um i don't know if that's a hot take or whatever i just never felt the desire but since joe's seen me reading these books He's like, you would like Game of Thrones. And the answer is I do like Game of Thrones. I've just never watched it. And so we're watching it um, for the first time for me and for I think the second time for him. So yeah, we're re we're rewatching for him Game of Thrones, which is very fun and interesting. And like, I'm surprised I never got into it before. It just like was never my thing, but it's fun and good. So yeah, uh, I, th I know I said I was potentially gonna do these other ones. Ow! But I don't think I want to now because my fingers are all pruny and I feel like I want to stop filming and talking. Um, <laughs> and it's hot and I just want to like go for a walk and enjoy the sun or something because it's nice out. So yeah, that was me potting up some of my cacti and succulents into semi-hydro. <laughs> it looks like I've just pulled these out from an oven with like an oven glove on. <laughs> I've baked my cacti. Um, but yeah, that's that's me talking, talking and chatting and potting and hanging out. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up down below and leave a comment on other houseplanty things you'd like me to talk about in the future. If you have any questions about this whole process, put them down there and I will do my best to answer them. And don't forget to subscribe for more. Thank you so, so much for watching and I will see you next time. Don't forget to keep growing. Goodbye.